when you are not paying yourself enough, right? If you are not paying yourself enough money to contribute to your family or to provide for your family, you are going to grow resentful to your business. And why I say it's irresponsible of you, because when you decided to start accepting money from clients, when you decided to go into contracts with vendors and contractors and employees, you made a commitment to them to stay in business. And if you are not paying yourself, you are being irresponsible with your client's money. Yeah. Welcome or welcome back to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle, and today we are going to talk about money. That's a topic that we like when we have a lot of it and we can spend it and we can get the things that we want and live the life that we want. And it's a topic that we hate when there's scarcity or discomfort or uncertainty or not enough of it. That's never fun. So today's guest is going to really guide us through her best practices and take us a little bit, I think, behind the scenes of her business. And so let me tell you a little bit about Miss Danielle Hayden. She is a co-founder and CEO of Kickstart Accounting. And that's a bookkeeping and accounting firm that is on a mission to coach six-figure plus and beyond female entrepreneurs so they can better understand their numbers through bookkeeping, financial analysis, and support so they can grow profitable, sustainable, and enjoyable businesses. With over 15 years experience in the world of finance, Danielle has worked her way from an accounting firm intern to the co-founder of Kickstarter Accounting. She understands how complex business finances can be, and she knows that entrepreneurs need more than just a bookkeeper. They need real financial analysis and support (laughs) in order to get the confidence required to create the sustainable wealth they deserve. Danielle brings a unique perspective when it comes to providing business owners with the total package as it relates to their finances. She's been a guest on multiple top-rated shows, including a well-designed business, interior design business podcast, the how of business, and female-empowered women in business and life. She is also the host of the Business by the Books podcast. And when Danielle is not in her money, money mindset work, you can find her hiking or spending time with her family. Now, that's impressive. We're going to put that entire bio in the show notes that you can find at amberhurdle.com forward slash podcast with an S and look for Danielle's episode because I want you to check out some of these other podcasts because it looks like some bad mama jamma women doing their thing. So welcome to the show, Danielle. Thank you so much for having me here. I am honored to be part of the show. Yeah, for sure. So let's dive right in because uh, money, a lot, money, a lot. (laughs) So can we just start with who should be on your money team? Because I have a bookkeeper, an accountant, a payroll manager. I don't have anybody that can help me forecast. So I don't have, I used to have a budget coach. There's lots of things going on. What do you need in a business? Like these are the must-haves. So I recommend four people as part of your your money team. And I actually think that your bookkeeper is your most important person to have on the team because if the bookkeeping isn't correct and you don't have somebody on the team that you can rely on, then the tax account, who's team number two, then we have our financial advisor. They're the person who is looking at your overall picture, your wealth, right? Are you investing enough for retirement? Are you looking into the future for your whole picture, not just your business, you personally? And then a business coach. We find that when we are working with our clients, the clients who have a business coach help them take the money, take the numbers, and decide what to do with it. I think gone are the days of needing a true CFO. And that's kind of hard for me to say because I started my career off as a CFO. But I don't think that we need CFOs in the traditional sense anymore, especially in entrepreneurship and small business. Really, what we need is a very strong bookkeeper who can provide those reports and then a business coach who could help us use the reports and then implement the strategies that we want in our business. 
So the bookkeeper provides the reports and then who the the business coach interprets the reports to help you make decisions. Is that well, what I your just... bookkeeper should really be helping you interpret the reports as well. So when we work with our, our clients, our clients, we do all the day to day book, bookkeeping behind the scenes. We send them their financial reports at the end of each month and we include what we call the snapshot. It's a really beautiful PDF document that gives them a high level overview of their numbers. It's then the business owner. They have the option to have a call with us, which will help them digest the information, know and understand it. But then it's really on the business owner to decide, what do I want to do with this information, right? You need to ask yourself, what's working? What's not working? What do I want to do more of? What do I want to stop doing? And that's where I think the business coach can help provide that accountability and guidance of like, this is my long-term goal. And how do I hit that long-term goal using the numbers to guide me there? Mm, I love that. I'm taking notes because these are going to be copious show notes. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so you're saying if I had to start somewhere, so let's just say, because I used to do business coaching and I was really more on the branding side. Like I wasn't necessarily like strict numbers and stuff. So I, I was a branding business coach. Not that I'm not anymore, but I just, that's really not the lane that I'm in. I'm employer brand central and that sort of thing now and really focused on that. But I would give people and then I would ask them, well, like, what can we spend on like Facebook ads or like, what's your budget for redesigning your logo? Or does this amount of dollars to update your website make sense for you? And they didn't know. Exactly. And so I was like, okay, so just based on my own experience of working with so many businesses and also like my, my money coach and everybody. I would help them put their budget together. Like they didn't even have a budget. Yeah, most business owners don't have a budget. And you know, it's interesting. When I started this business nine years ago, I really wanted to help at a more strategic level, meaning I wanted to help provide the budgeting and the forward-looking strategies. However, if you don't have bookkeeping in place, you can't do that, right? right? <laughs> you have to look backwards in order to look forward. Where have you been? What have you been spending money on? What is the revenue last year? We we can't just say, well, I'm going to spend $50,000 on, on Facebook ads this year. Well, what did you spend last year? Zero? Well, do we really think we should spend $50,000? Does that really align with where we're going? So knowing where we, the bookkeeping allows us to know where we're, we have been so we know where we want to go. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Look back to know where you're going forward. Okay, so now that we've got just the fundamentals in place, we know step one is bookkeeper. Step two is, well, you have to have somebody doing your taxes. That's a requirement. <laughs> I mean, like whether it's you or somebody else, somebody's going to well, do your taxes. It should not be you. So Correct. once you <laughs> own a business, it should not be you. I think that is like the defining moment is the day that you you file that LLC paperwork. You should not be the one doing your taxes anymore. Find a CPA that you enjoy working with. You know, when we work with our clients, we have the bookkeeping and then t the, the tax division. And we're able to really help our clients understand their return and the tax strategies. They're going to help that save them money in the long run. So we don't want to just find somebody to file our, we need to find somebody who cares about our business and to help us with those, those strategies. So if you're filing your own return, not only are you possibly missing out on deductions, but then you're definitely missing out on the strategies and you might be chasing the tax influencers online and they might be guiding you down a direction that you don't even know that you're going. Yeah. Listen, I like to stay in my lane. That is not my lane. Yeah. I talk about bubble wrap. Like if something is not, if it doesn't make you a weak person, just like fine China is not terrible because you can't ship across the country without protecting it. Like I know I need protection. And that begins with a bookkeeper and a CPA. Yeah. I like that analogy. <laughs> That's my number one bubble wrap. Like if nothing else, if I can't pay for anybody else, I am paying for that for sure. Because otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. So we have that all down. Now it's like, okay, now mindset. Where does yeah. that fit in for you? And then like, and I'm super interested too. And like my audience knows, like I'm, I don't try to make this a commercial for anybody. Listen, she's not paying me, but I want to know how do you guys do it? Because I'm not going to sit here and interview you. And then a bunch of people go like, oh my God, I need that. And then like have to start over with, well, what is it like to work with you? So can you do it through 
Like this is how we approach this topic. Yeah, yeah, of course. So money mindset, it's really interesting. Again, when I started the business nine years ago, if you when people used to say mindset to me, I'm like, what are you talking about? This is number, this is data. Make a decision and move on. Wow, I was wrong. You know, we are carrying these money stories from our childhood, from our teenage years, college, our friends' parents, our parents, our grandparents. Like, we don't just start a business and then let all that go. Like, none of it actually happened. Like, you're carrying all that baggage, all that messaging into your business. And then it, and then it's actually contributing to the way that you make decisions. So we find, we have a money personality type. So if you go to kickstartaccountinginc.com slash quiz, you can take your money personality type quiz there. Now we have four types of people. Free spender, they're the people who, they do not want to look at the money. They do not want to look at the numbers before they go and make purchases. They are ready and they're ready now. They buy. Then we have our keepers. Those are the people they want to hold on to the money. Like no amount of savings ever feels like enough. They're usually the people who say to me, well, I reinvest everything back into the business. I'm like, well, what are you reinvesting in? They're like, I don't know. I just want to leave my money in my business. I'm like, you're just afraid to take an owner's draw. So then we have our keepers, right? We just want to save, save, save. We have our perfectionists who they want to know where every stinking dollar is coming That's in. That's not me. <laughs> it's not me. I am the queen of ish. <laughs> <laughs> they want to know where every dollar is coming in from, where every dollar is being spent. So that's our perfectionist. And then we have our balance seeker. And our balance seeker knows that they cannot do everything on their own, that they have to have people in their business to help them, and that they need to be able to spend money to make money. We recently did a podcast episode on our podcast, Business by the Books, about healthy spending. Because what we find is that clients will get on the call, financial review call with me, and they'll say, all right, Danielle, tell me where to cut back. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? Cut back? Like, you didn't spend anything. You know, you're you're over here trying to cut back, but if I asked you the last time you had dinner with your kids, you know, you're spending you're you're not spending any money on a team, you're not spending any money on systems, software, because we're too scared to spend money to support our the growth of our business. If you're not hitting your revenue goals, my question is, let me see your income statement and I'll tell you why you're not hitting your revenue goals. Like I could tell you right now that you are not spending enough money to hit your goals. So when we work with our clients, we provide you with the bookkeeping. So we're recording your spending habits that your money personality type is contributing to. And then as we have the strategy calls with our clients over time, we'll start to digest this information. Now, I always wanna tell people, knowing your numbers, there's no movie star moment. Like I'll never forget, We I took, I took my daughter to Italy. She graduated high school and I took her to Italy as her you know celebratory, congratulations gift. And on the way home, she said, you know, mom, I really thought after this trip, I would know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. <laughs> like, I thought I was going to know if I wanted to go away to college, if I was going to know what I wanted to do. And I'm like, wow, we have been so programmed that we are going to have this movie star moment and that all of a sudden the stars are going to align and we, all the numbers are going to make sense. And it's not like that. It's like going to the gym, right? I wake up at 5 a.m. whether I want to go or not, and I go to the gym. And every day at the end of the day, I go for a walk. And it's because I'm putting in my dues so that I can, so I know where I'm at. And reviewing your numbers is the same thing. There's no movie star moment. Is that all gonna make sense tomorrow? There's no, I have an epiphany about my spending and now I'm fixed. We don't fix people. But we provide, right? Like we use bookkeeping as a vehicle to make better business decisions. I love it. I love it. Okay. So we definitely will put that quiz in the show notes. And then I I downloaded something while I was cyber stalking you. I haven't accessed it yet, but I was like, oh, it's just like you have a boot camp and you have like this whole guide. So while we're kind of in this space of like, you don't even have to work with me, but I got some free tools and I know my free tools that I offer, like, if you never work with me, you will make progress with my free tools. Like, so I know that's what yours are because I can tell. So what all do you have that if somebody's like, okay, I'm going to dip my toe in this, but I'm not yet ready to have a scary conversation with Danielle or her team. 
like the the um the profit planner. Can you yeah. walk me through that? Yeah. If you go to kickstartedcountyinc.com slash gift, there's a lot of downloads there. So if you need the top tax deductions in your business, go and download that and that will give you access to our freebies and walks you through our entire framework. The Profit Planner is a 12 module. It was designed as a planner so that every day you're having one digestible action step to understanding your numbers, right? Again, this doesn't happen overnight. So people sign up for services with us and they're like, well, why don't I get it? Like, why is it all here? And it's because it takes time. And so the planner is a day-by-day, step-by-step walkthrough of how to understand your numbers. So I think the best place for you to go is kickstartedcountyinc.com slash gift. Get those freebies there. And then listen to Business by the Books. We are, we just recently rebranded our podcast. And every week is dedicated solo episodes of walking you through how to use your numbers to make better business decisions. Because people say to me all the time, like, what does it mean? Like, why, like, why do I, why do people tell me to know my numbers? Like, what the heck do I do after I <laughs> yeah. know my numbers? So we dedicated a whole podcast to it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. So, okay. Next then is you said pull your PL, blah, blah, blah. Those are scary words to some people. Like my I had a bookkeeper slash kind of coach. I mean, he like walked me through like this is what this means and this is what that means. And like literally like did a whiteboard and taught me. Because I've I had never done that before. The businesses I've owned before was was like I was a celebrity event planning company. So it's like here is here's the event, here's the budget for the event, here's who we can hire for the event. When that's done, that's all cleaned up. We take our profit, we move to the next event. And everything was very contained. And then I turned it all over to the accountant and they filed our taxes and that was that. Like the bookkeeping part was kind of like loosey-goosey, like most businesses, right? So now I'm in a big girl business. (laughs) Vastly different. Like there is no, you know, hoping, wishing and praying. But like, if I'm in my accounting software, where do I get stuck there? And what do what what do I need to do in my accounting software versus outside of my accounting software? Well, first of all, I'll say you're never too small to have bookkeeping in place. Yes. Right. We have plans that that start with businesses of doing less than fifty thousand dollars a year. Because no matter what, you need bookkeeping in your business. You need to know your numbers. And you need to be able to file your taxes at the end of the year. They need to be right. Otherwise, you it is costing you money to file your taxes incorrectly. Mm-hmm. And even if your tax accountant is throwing together some numbers at the end of the year, you're losing out on opportunities to make business decisions throughout the year. Oh, for no. sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. So in terms of your accounting software, the first thing you need to do is to make sure that the bookkeeping is complete. So when we work with our clients, We use our strategic framework to set up QuickBooks because most QuickBooks files are set up in a way that doesn't really make sense. QuickBooks uses this really fun account called Office Expenses and Software. Well, like, which is it? Is it Office Expenses or is it software? Because those are two very different things. Very different things. And if I'm overspending in my business, I can't really figure out where I'm, I'm spending money if I'm using accounts like that. So our first step is, how is your chart of accounts even set up? Now, chart of accounts is just a fancy way of saying, where are you putting your transactions? Like, how do you record each transaction that's coming in? So you have to set it up correctly first. You have to actually do the bookkeeping, right? So somebody, whether it be you, DIY, or somebody else done for you, somebody needs to do the actual bookkeeping. Then it becomes your job to actually look at the numbers. So I always tell people, any business owner. I don't believe any business owner ever should do your own bookkeeping because I went to school for a really long time. Like, yeah, right? Like I have my master's degree. I went to school for a long time. I have my CPA. I have a team of people who have, I mean, between us, we have like hundreds of years of education. Right. You as a business owner, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. (laughs) You should not be doing your own bookkeeping. You don't know how. And I find it almost well, my awful. my husband will do it or my yep. wife will do it or my, my daughter ignorant. will do it. Yeah. It's not right. Right. So those are the those are the kind of clients when we get them, 
they think that they're doing pretty good and we look at it we're like oh my god should we have them amend their tax return like this is a disaster so you know your job as a business owner is not to do your bookkeeping you need to do what you are good at yeah. however you do have a role here you need to be looking at the numbers on a monthly basis you need to look at the numbers so that you can ask yourself strategically what's working what's not working why the heck am i losing money again let me look at the numbers where am i overspending oh i didn't hit i didn't hit my revenue goal for the sixth month in a row why am i not hitting my revenue numbers oh well let me look at my spending i'm not spending any money in advertising and marketing well no kidding you're not hitting your revenue money numbers you didn't do anything to get you there right so the numbers are going to tell you a story and it's your job as the business owner to listen to the story look at the numbers but you have to take action afterwards yeah yeah i love it okay let's talk about paying ourselves that was hard for me at first because i used to be the person that reinvested it and there is a, a variety of reasons in that that my spouse at the time you know we just we i had multiple businesses he had multiple businesses and like it was kind of like how do we not make too much money and then not get into the weird things that it's not worth that you know what i mean like there's there's other stuff behind the scenes when you're dealing with wealth i'll just say that and and so i was the person i was like i'll just reinvest it reinvest it reinvest it when now i'm like sisters are getting paid <laughs> but <laughs> how do you pay yourself as a business owner and you say it's irresponsible not to which i agree but i want to hear your your reason why you're not running a nonprofit <laughs> and you are going to become resentful to your business. We had a client who came to us and she was about her third year in business. And she said to me, I don't know why I want to close it all down and run away. Like feel burnt out. I feel like I'm putting everything I have into this business and it's working, right? It's working. I'm growing. I'm hiring. I'm changing people's lives. But I feel resentful. Looked at her numbers. She's not paying herself. Yeah. When you are not paying yourself enough, right? If you are not paying yourself enough money to contribute to your family or to provide for your family, you are going to grow resentful to your business. And why I say it's irresponsible of you, because when you decided to start accepting money from clients, when you decided to go into contracts with vendors and contractors and employees, you made a commitment to them to stay in business. And if you are not paying yourself, you are being irresponsible with your client's money. Yeah. Well, and, and so that's one thing that I often say. And like when I'm holding anyone accountable internally or externally, it's I am the CEO. It is literally my fiduciary responsibility to ensure that we're profitable. It's my job. That's my one job. It is your job. one job. Yeah. <laughs> that everybody gets paid, that all the bills are paid, that we're ethically doing business, that we're, you know, looking to become profitable or we are profitable or we're sustaining our profitability wherever you are in your business. That's your one job. But if you are not getting paid and you're profitable, it's still unethical. Right, because what happens is people say, I'm, I'm, I'm profitable, like I've got that part. I'm like, yeah, when's the last time you had dinner with your family? Did yeah. you go to the gym over the last three months? Right. How do you feel at the end of the day? Right, right. Work, working weekends? If you're very profitable, I want you to check your energy. Yeah. Right? Because are you profitable because you're not paying anybody on the team and you're doing five jobs? Now, look, I say this because I've done it. Like, I'm not saying it above the fold. I have been there. There has been years where I call myself like the octopus. Like my, my business, I just fill in the hole. Like wherever there's a hole in the business, I fill it. And that's something that I've had to work through. And as a business owner, I need to properly staff my business so that I am not burnt out, so my team is not burnt out but I also have to pay myself. So you get paid for your time and your energy and your risk and your investment in your business. And we can talk logistically of like how you actually pay yourself, 
Uh, but you have to pay yourself because not all profit is created equal. Well, let's get into that just real high level logistically. Like I know I just have a certain owner's draw that every pay period, the payroll software, when everybody else gets paid, it gets put in my account. So is that the way to do it? And then like when there's a bigger chunk or whatever, then, you know, you take whatever you you decide at that point. But so a lot of people will say to me, I am the business. So like I just kind of commingle my business and personal. (laughs) Um, You know, why do I need to do that? It's my money anyway. If you are commingling your business and personal finances, you're doing what we call piercing the corporate veil. So if somebody comes to sue you, your business, that you have now exposed you and your family because you are commingling your business and your personal funds. You can't do that. Literally, l- legally, ethically, you can't do that. You are required as an LLC to pay your personal expenses from your personal account. It is, your business money is actually not your money. It, you are not your business. You are not your business. As an LLC, you would take a transfer you just literally are moving cash from your business account to your personal account. You choose the amount of money. It doesn't really matter. It's for cash management purposes, how much you take. You want to take a percentage of your profits from your business and transfer that from the business to the personal. It's when you become an S-corp that it really takes it to the next level because the IRS requires you to take a reasonable compensation. You are not allowed to take any owner's draws from your business until you've paid yourself enough through salary. So when you become an S-corp, you're actually an employee to your business. So you have to pay yourself as an employee and you have to pay yourself enough. And this is a tax strategy. So at, when we do our, our clients' taxes, this is one of the t- strategies that we're looking at. Should you become an S-corp? Oh, you're an S-corp. Are you paying yourself enough? We do a reasonable comp calculation for every single one of our S-corp clients. And then how much in draws should you be taking so that you're not going below basis? I'm going to stop there. I won't say any more accounting terms. However, just know that you need to be paid regardless whether you're an LLC or an S Corp. It's just how you pay yourself is different and the limits in which you have. Yeah, that's interesting because my, so I have um, Employer Brand Central, which is a completely different company than Amber Hurdle Consulting, and both are LLCs, and one's in the state of Tennessee and one's in the state of Florida, where I live now. And my Florida accountant, bookkeeper, the whole collaboration has a team, whatever. She's like, yeah, I want you to be an escort. And I was like, oh, okay. So she explained all these things to me. And in my mind, and y'all, you know, I keep it real. When I had my event planning company years ago, I made it an escort on purpose. And to me, all that meant was more paperwork. But back then I was trying to do everything on my own, remember? So it was just like, so in my mind, y'all, this isn't real. There's no facts behind it. It was in the back of Amber's crazy mind. Escort means more drama for me. I'm going to stick with an LLC. That's easy. I pick easy because everything about business is complicated. And then what I'm hearing, though, is you're making it more complicated by trying to think that it's easy. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're actually it's you're just you're missing out on an opportunity. Yeah. Right. Like there's a huge opportunity. There's a lot of benefits to being an S Corp and you're missing out if you're not willing Well we're to switching. Think. We're we're in the process of that right, right. now. So yeah. Now I, can I just say I, I have three requirements for anybody who's thinking about becoming an S Corp. Can okay. I give you those? Okay. Yeah. So one, I want you to have made at least fifty thousand dollars a year in net profit for at least two years. So if you're not bringing in more than $50,000 a year in net, not gross, net profit, it's not tax advantageous for you to become an escort. If you are still commingling business and personal expenses, there's going to be no magic wand when you become an escort and you're going to suddenly stop doing it. Yeah. So if you are still commingling, do not become an escort. Right? Right. Um, lastly, if you are not currently paying yourself and your business is not comfortable with taking out cash from your business, don't become an S-corp because you're not magically going to find cash to suddenly pay your reasonable compensation. So the only time you'll become an S-corp is if you have more than two years of $50,000 a year in net, net income, you do not commingle business and personal, and you pay yourself an owner's draw on a regular basis. Then you become an S-corp. It's a very simple paperwork. You'll, you'll be on payroll with the rest of your employees. Look, Amber, your bookkeeping team they should handle everything for you. 
Like when we work with our clients, there's nothing for them to do. We do payroll setup. We set up, like they send in the paperwork, but there's nothing more for you to do other than to pay yourself. So don't miss out on the opportunity. And I mean that to you and every listener. Everyone, yeah. Well, my listeners know I tell them myself all the time because as women, we get in our heads like, you know, they put me up on some pedestal, like I'm some, you know, queen dingling up here, guru of all gurus, because I happen to have a microphone in my office. Like, this yeah. isn't, like I'm not magic. I just am mouthy. Like, that's the only difference. So, and I'm willing to say like, oh, I struggle with this. Or yeah, I used to struggle with that. Or I've learned this or whatever. So I just, you know, I, I want Bombshell for you to understand I tell them myself so that you understand you're okay. You're normal. We all deal with these things. If there wasn't this problem that was prevalent and like enough for Kickstart Accounting to have a whole business and not just a business, like they're not just a normal accounting firm. Like they have a whole bunch of other support that they offer to help women like us figure it all out because they see, oh, this is a problem. This is like women are not, and not all are women, I'm sure, but like, Entrepreneurs in general are entrepreneurs struck- in general. Yeah, I speak yeah. to women a lot because I want to be a resource for women. Yes. I believe that we historically didn't have access to this information. I want to bring access to women, and I want them to know that it's okay to ask for help. And I'm here to help you. However, every strategy that I say, every mindset issue, men have them. Uh, I, I'm I'm in several mastermind groups, and the men that I speak to the men who are our clients, like they have the same exact issues. That's so it. this is for everybody, no matter what. And I say that we have our bombshell boys because the bombshell boys, the what's bombshell up guys? <laughs> they have figured out that, oh, Amber's advice and Amber's guest advice is for everyone. She just puts lipstick and high heels on it to make it because the rest of the world is for men. The rest of the business world was built by, and guys, we're not picking on you, but you built it. And then we came into it and we're like, hey, what if we did it this way? And you're like, no, we like it this way. And so we just carve out our own little world over here to put lipstick and high heels on it and move forward. So, and that's a very, go back and listen to the episode about why we need women's conferences. And then that will help even things out. But I want to talk to you all day, but we're coming up on time. (laughs) I'm going to ask you the final question that we ask every single guest. And that is, what is your final parting piece of advice? If if they heard nothing else in this episode, if they could walk away with this to noodle over while they're on the treadmill, while they're driving, whatever, what would you tell a bold, brave, unwaveringly confident woman in business who sucks it up, falls down, skins her knees, and gets back up because dang it, she knows she can do it? What are you going to say to her? Hire before you're ready. Yeah. You know, we were worked with so many clients throughout the years that wait to hire until they think they can afford it until they think they're big enough till they think that they 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 can until they've given themselves permission and i wish i would have hired earlier every single one of my clients who we've walked through hiring they wish they would have hired earlier so that might mean hiring an expert like a bookkeeper or you know it might look like that type of role it might look like a contractor it might look like an employee but you owe it to yourself and to your business and to your mission to be able to bring people in to help you. You don't have to do it alone. You can't. There's no way. Yeah. And then people like they buy all of these courses and a $2,000 this and a $5,000 this and I'm going to join this mastermind which is a glorified Facebook group and they spend all this money on knowledge. And I sell courses I'm not saying that they're not for people, but take that money and go hire somebody part-time on Fiverr or Odesk to help get you out of the weeds. And so that when you learn all these things in these courses, you have somebody to like delegate to. That's my parting piece of advice for today, if I may offer it, because I agree with hire if, if before you're ready. Story of my life. Okay. So where can we find you on the interwebs? Kickstartcountyinc.com. Come book a call listen to the podcast business by the books and you're danielle hayden on instagram kickstart accounting on facebook kickstart accounting.com on uh kickstart accounting on instagram on instagram um, and then kickstart accounting inc.com is the the website okay got it all right well we'll put all that in the show notes so if you're driving whatever don't you know 
be safe. And we will put that on the show notes, which you can find at amberhurl.com forward slash podcast with an S. And I, I just strongly encourage you, if you do nothing else, if you are a business owner, I strongly encourage you to at least download some of her resources because they look super valuable. I'm downloading some of them. I am looking at this stuff because I do think that this is an opportunity. If you want to work with them, fantastic. But we're just saying like, hey, like wrap your mind around things on your own right now. And they, yeah. they're all of us who are passionate about what we do, if if we put out high quality freebies, imagine what you get when you pay. That's all I got to say. So <laughs> yeah, I feel like we track the same, you know, it's like, I'm not putting anything but excellence out into the world. If I'm going to put something out free in the world, it's going to change something for you so that you know that I can change and help you. Take control of your own destiny. Listen to business by the books. I, you know, it is the resource to help you answer the question. What do I, what do I need to do when I know the numbers? Manage your business, take responsibility. That is a resource for you to be able to use. And when you're ready, Kickstarter Account Inc. is here to take the bookkeeping off your plate and be an accountability partner for you as you continue to grow. I love it. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank Danielle, you. for being on the show and for offering your well-earned wisdom. I'm looking forward to see what bombshells do with this information and, and all of your knowledge. Okay. Bombshell, you know what to do next. Leave a rating and review. Share this with somebody that you know needs this information. Go out into the world. Don't be scared. Be the bold, brave, unwaveringly confident entrepreneur or leader in a corporate environment or leader in a small to mid-size environment, whatever it is. I just really feel like this year has started off a little wobbly. We were hoping it wouldn't, but that's the energy that I'm getting from a lot of people is that it just doesn't feel like the kick butt year they thought it was going to be. And so like, let's just regroup. And money is, is such a foundational part of it. And it's why I was so excited to have Danielle on the show. So continue to fuel and feed each other. Find fellow bombshells. We don't have a community on purpose because I don't want you on Facebook, but I do want you to find other human beings that you can touch, that you can connect with, that you can call, that you can text, that you could get on Zoom with and have a meaningful experience because she's a bad mamma jamma just like you. And when you surround yourself with those type of people, you only get better. So with that, I'm going to leave you and I will see you on the next episode.